1979, you start WRL. Talk about how it was a giant leap of faith, right? And the difficulties and struggles that came along with it. So what in the world made you want to start LFR 30 years later? I think I repeated that stupidity. <laughs> uh, you know, it like goes around, comes around. Uh, <clears throat> You know, it, it really was good intentions, I thought, <laughs> at the time. Uh, it was a, a friend that we had met. He was a, a David Starr, had driven in the pro- truck series. And um, so we had, we had sponsored David a couple of truck races. And in fact, we had a, had bought the place at Texas Motor Speedway, and, and uh, we enjoyed going to the race. Uh, the... Te- uh, second Texas race was on Melinda's birthday. Mm-hmm. So we took her there. And <clears throat> so it, life was really pretty good at, at that juncture until uh, I couldn't, I guess you could, you know, the old buy a ride that mm-hmm. was available for David. And I just hated to just go buy him a ride and spend money. Right. So, you know, I, I knew nothing about the racing. <laughs> it was terrible ignorance. <laughs> and stupidity and, and so we were Sharon and I were coming back from our place up at the lake one Sunday afternoon in in October November and I just said you know I think I'll start a cup team where Dave will have a ride mm-hmm. and uh man it, it went from there I caught a plane Michael and I we went up and talked to Roush and and RCR and about buying cars yeah you know engines those things that you need. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Kind of important. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And then I forgot about the part of that goes with, Oh, you got to have a shop. And, <laughs> oh yeah. You got to have somebody to work on them and crew chief. And I mean, seriously, I had uh, spent a day at Roush and we spent Michael and I spent a day at uh, RCR and came back and, and decided that Roush and Ford was the way to go. Cause it was cheaper mm-hmm. r- realistically. Yeah. Because I didn't know who or what was better. It was just cheaper. Right. And uh, I, you know, met Doug Yates and his group really liked Doug. And we've become great friends since then. But so <clears throat> we made another trip back up here and told Roush, yeah, this is what we want to do. And want to buy cars and worked out a plan because we want to try to run the Texas race in April. Right. Our first race. And this is in December. Right. <laughs> and so... I was walking out of the building. Scott Bowen was the, was the gentleman that I, I dealt with, and, he's, and Scott's still over there. And all of a sudden, it dawned on me, stopped and said, hey, Scott, I'm going to need a crew chief. You know, you know anybody? <laughs> and, and Scott did know somebody, and he gave me the name. I went immediately to the car, called him, yeah. and it only took me till January to convince him to go to work for me. Right. He was fixing to go on a vacation on a cruise over the, over the, I think that December, January and, or I was, can't remember which. And so Wally Rogers and, and, uh, hired Wally. And then it's like, where are we going to go? Yeah. <laughs> so we found what is our current shop mm-hmm. rented a little space in the back with two offices and a place to put two cars. And while they started hiring some people for us, right. you know, put the, we, we actually got our first car, Deno, the 1st of March, our, our backup car to, to go to run the 1st of April race at Texas. And so it never, I'd never seen a race car put together. Mm-hmm. And how do well, you fill out all the forms for NASCAR, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> everything you needed to do. Didn't have a clue, but that's what I did after, I guess say, after hours in Texas. Yeah. I spent time on the phone calling and asking right. people, what, how do I do this? Calling Daytona. How do I, if I want to race, what do I got to do? Right. And they started sending me forms and oh my gosh, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, a, it was, it was worse than this podcast. It was a nightmare. Oh, that bad. Oh, oh my it goodness. was terrible. I'm serious. <laughs> and so here we went and we actually, uh, you know, and important things now, yeah. designs. Right. What would the car look like? Mm-hmm. So I'd run in and met Sam Bass. So I, I, I hired Sam, and we kind of hit it off, and he started working on designs, and he did more drawings for me. I still got them. <laughs> I, I, I That's mean, amazing. Uh, you know, great guy. 
and uh, we still use one of the designs and there's somebody in our organization that has conveniently changed one of them and didn't like the Texas in it and <laughs> forgot the guy's name, but I think he had him on the other day. Oh. I th he, he does still work for us, though. <laughs> maybe fortunately, unfortunately, maybe not much longer. But anyway, <laughs> he's uh, – so I was going to rent a hauler. Yeah. And uh, didn't – again, didn't know anybody who was reputable, who wasn't. And I'd find one. Oh, he's not – better not – you know, you don't want to mess with him. And then little by little, the stupid things. Well, you know, you can buy this one, you can do that, and then it just got really deep. <laughs> we wound up buying a hauler, and the guy had not paid for. It was a good hauler, right. one we just traded a year or so ago. Yeah, because uh, we kept it for a long time. Then it's like, dang, wait a minute. How are you going to pull this hauler around? I got to have a tractor. It's just snowballed it's one just after snowballed. another. You know, what are you going to do for a pit box? Well, what do we need a pit box for? <clears throat> so it wasn't quite that bad. But, yeah. uh, my really goal was not to look like Florida or or uh, Texas hillbillies yeah, getting to yeah. the track. I mean, this go. is our home track right? Oh, that yeah. we're going to back up and, and show up yeah. to. So. We had some really nice looking apparel. <laughs> we had some really nice looking cars. I thought it did. You know, Sam kind of went out on a limb. And, yeah, it's good. And uh, so I told Wally because we couldn't test. Yeah. And David had never driven a Cub car. That was the first time he was in Cub. Yeah. Really? Yes. Wow. I mean, we couldn't test. We didn't go nowhere. So it was me, first time owner. Yeah. I own a cup car. Now, David, jump in and go drive it. That's amazing. So, and there's a lot of cars in that race. I don't remember if it was 45, 46, yeah. or maybe more for 43 entry. Right. So, I told Wally, man, I don't know if we're going to go be able to go very fast or not, but we're really going to look good going slow. There you go. You know, we're... <laughs> I want to look good backing off the hauler. Yep. You know, let's look professional. Yep. We may be slow, but let's look professional. And that was a – going into that cup garage the first time was one of the most – you know, I played sports in high school and college, and that wasn't in, intimidating. But going into that cup garage, that first race in April – was one of the most intimidating things I'd ever had to do. It's like all these people you know, right. when you know their names, you know what they do from watching racing. Right. And now you're going to go be amongst them. Yeah. <clears throat> and you ain't got a clue a, a, about a lot of rules, regulations, going through inspections, all the stuff. What are we going to do now, Wally? What are we going to do next? Right. What are you doing looking at our engine? What are you doing this underneath the car? Right. I, let's face it. They don't just let Joe blow in the garage like we were yeah. prior to becoming a NASCAR owner. Right. You know, right. you know, get a hard card and a radiator cap and you're an owner. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, they don't let you do that. Right, right. So it was a really rude awakening and uh, intimidated awakening. The amazing thing was we actually made the race. Right. Yeah, it was crazy. While it kept Billy me up, Bob, it's really not that easy, bud. You yeah. know, it's really not that easy. Absolutely. Well, what if we don't make the race? Oh, we got to leave. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So we actually made the race, and David, man, I don't know, I think made it like 187 laps or something before we put it in turn four wall yeah. and met the car at the garage. And, you know, I was really proud of my car. Right. I mean, it looked good right. before he did that. Before. <laughs> and, you know, it's like your personal car. Yeah. You know, whereas all those guys in the garage, they get banged up and beat up all the time. They don't think nothing of it. Right. And I'm looking at this car going, can we fix it? <laughs> Look at how bad it is. <laughs> nah, Wally said, that's no, we'll put a side on it. Put a side on it? Yeah, we'll do this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that was our first race. Man, I love it. And, yeah. and so it was, uh, it was an event. Yeah. At least we didn't not make the race. Right. 
which we did it's later a big in the year. First time out. I mean, well, <clears throat> we actually because we ran eight races. Right. We made our first four races, uh-huh. which was Wally. After every time we'd wait, I says, "It isn't really this easy, Bob." Yeah. Okay, Wally, I believe you. It really isn't this easy. Uh-huh. Well, after we did the fourth one, yeah. reality hit. Right. We we didn't make the last four races, and then I had become the competitive Bob had come out. Yeah, it's like I can't I can't keep doing this, not making the races. Right. So it's like if I'm going to stay in and do this, then I <clears throat> talked to some people and learned, and uh, we decided to change drivers, which is probably one of the <clears throat> next most difficult because I had to tell. David, who had started the team up for, oh, by the way, I'm staying, but you're not. Right. You know, that it isn't working out. So that right. was a difficult. So it's like, geez, I, I do this to have fun. Right. This ain't no fun. Right. Yeah. 